This is your daily devotion for April 14th. Here's a little clip from a video of a fish I caught in May of last year in Colorado. Well, this way. Hold it up high. There you go. Don't horse it. A big rainbow. 20 inch rainbow. Last day in Colorado. I take a lot of video when I fish uh, because I enjoy editing it, putting it all together, and then and then watching it. You know, watching it a year later or two years later kind of feels like reliving the experience. But I also take video because like most trout fishermen, I release most of the fish I catch. Trout aren't like bluegill. Uh, if too many people keep too many, there, there won't be any left. So part of the reason for taking the video is that I then have proof of the fish I, I catch. This particular fish is the the 20 inch rainbow that I've been trying to catch for, for a long time. So I suppose it's a little vain, you know, that I, I keep that video and maybe vain that I share it with other people, but it's something I'm proud of and, and I have proof. People often hesitate to believe uh, extraordinary events happen unless they are given proof and for good reason. It's really easy to say uh, the fish was this big. It's clear that the Apostle Paul uh, was, was thinking along these lines when he wrote 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. The most extraordinary event that's ever happened is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there are people who reject Christianity because of, of this claim of Jesus' bodily resurrection. It's a myth, they say. It's a fairy tale. No such thing could ever happen. Dead people don't come back to life. Clearly, Paul is thinking about that, that kind of, of criticism uh, when he wrote, After that he, that is Jesus, appeared to over 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. There's two things we really need to, to notice there. Number one, the Apostle Paul says that hundreds of people at the same time saw Jesus alive after he had been dead. Number two, Paul specifically says these people who witnessed it, they're still alive. Now, why would Paul specifically mention that? So that the Christians in Corinth could go and do some investigating of their own. They could track down some of these eyewitnesses and, and find out, is what Paul is saying, is, is that true? If... Paul was just making this up. If the disciples were making all of this up, if this was uh, just a big hoax, it would be very, very foolish for Paul to say such a thing. But the fact that he did, and the fact that Christianity survived and flourished, tells us that people did do some investigating. People did find eyewitnesses. They heard firsthand evidence that Jesus really did come back from the dead. Now we rightly say that, that we believe Jesus rose from the dead because the Bible says so and the Holy Spirit has created faith in our hearts. He's convinced us of this and that is true. But it's also true that here as well as in some other places, the Bible itself points to you know, normal, factual, historical evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible does this because Jesus' resurrection is an actual event that really, truly happened. God, our salvation, depends on something that actually happened in history. God could not just wave a divine wand and say, there, everyone's forgiven. He couldn't do that because that would make God a monster. Good and evil really matter. If God were just to ignore evil deeds, that would make him a monster. Evil deeds need to be punished. His solution was to punish his son instead of us. And the resurrection of that son is the proof 
that it worked. So you know what that means. That means that yes, there is real historical, physical proof that your sins are forgiven. His name is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, your resurrection is the proof that our sins are forgiven. Help us to live our lives confidently in that forgiveness. Amen. Your moment of joy today is that so many of you have been once again calling and, and, and emailing and wondering how they can, can help people out. We had a, a whole group of people uh, get involved and organized uh, so that uh, a couple of our members uh, would be able to, to watch uh, some of these devotions and worship services. Um, folks who don't have an internet connection. And we are working on um, making that more available to more people. Um, been waiting for some equipment to come, uh, but we'll, we'll be doing that soon. Have a blessed week.